Welcome to the Soap Bible Study Series from Oak Tree Community Church in South Bend, Indiana. We're working our way through the book of 1 Kings, and uh, we have... Pretty far along. Pretty far, two weeks yep. left, and... Um, um, you know, you think when you think of the books of the kings, you're like, and this guy was king, and this guy was king. Yeah. That's really more Second Kings. There's some pretty cool stuff left yeah. in yeah, this definitely. in First Kings here. Some yep. things that, um, you, um, if you don't remember it, you're really gonna like it. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So it's important to note that the nation of Israel has been split in two. Yeah. Right. And we have the Northern Kingdom, uh, which it, which is most of the tribes, mm -hmm. and it's also called Israel. We're calling it Israel, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. So we got to keep that straight. And then yep. we have the southern kingdom, which has Jerusalem yep. uh, and Judah, yep. uh, which it, which is the big tribe. And then it also has Benjamin and Simeon. Simeon has a bit, has basically somewhat yeah. been absorbed into Judah. Yeah. yeah. So those three, and then the rest, the rest are in the north. So the southern tribe, or also Judah. That's what so we call. So we call Israel yep. and Judah as the yep. as the when you're reading. That's the terms that the writers will use, yeah. right? And so between this time period that we're talking about, there's 40 kings. Mm -hmm. So this would be, would uh, Saul be one of the 40 or is it after? No, no, no. So the, the, the 40 does not include Saul, David, Solomon, Solomon. you know, Ishbosheth, the two-year guy, the, you know, any, okay. it's just from the time they split. 20 in the north, 20 in the okay. south. There's a queen in there that usually gets overlooked. Um, but yeah, oh, we haven't hit the queen yet. Yeah, I haven't hit the queen yet. Yeah. So. Um, so, and what we find is in Israel, so the northern part, none of the kings were good. None. Not a, not a single one out of twenty. Yep. And in the southern, there was about seven that were not terrible. Yeah. <laughs> we'll say. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So those are, were, those are those really, are the ones that we're going to focus really on. Really good. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Exactly. But it's basically a sad book that they're talking about. Uh, some popular stories that we grew up with uh, yep. we'll, we'll kind of hit today and uh, the if you take first uh, if you take the divided kingdom itself uh, the second half of first kings and all of second kings you're gonna run about uh, 300, 300 years, years about 300 okay. years 200 years until the northern kingdom Israel falls and then about another, another hundred, hundred years or so before Babylon comes in and, and starts taking the southern kingdom okay. Uh, so for reading this week, we're going to be in chapter uh, 16, right? We're starting in starting 16, 16, sort of the second half through. of 16, yeah. yeah. And all the way through 19. 19. Yeah. 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 Okay, so uh, we continue with the doom and gloom, um, <laughs> right? So the, the first guy, Zimmery, the only reason I'm bringing him up is because he was king for... Seven, seven days. days. Seven days. Seven days. Yep. So how do you become king for seven days? You assassinate the current king. You are now king. The army wakes up and goes, hey, <laughs> you can't do that. And, and takes, takes him out. You out. <laughs> and there's your seven days of, uh, yeah. you know, 15 minutes yep. of fame. <laughs> Next. <laughs> um, and he was in the north. Yes, sorry. Yeah. No, he was yeah, he was one of the Israel. Israel. And and so that's that's one of the important things, right? That, that yeah, we want to make sure that we going that we up keep, and down. We're going back and forth. Yeah. But in the south, in the kingdom of Judah, the southern the southern kingdom, we're going to have until the very, very end, we're gonna have an unbroken line of Davidic right. family. This is still David's right. family, David's right? right? In the north, yeah, it's whoever all bets are off, anything goes, who like right. you said, whoever can assassinate whomever. Right. Um, so the next king is a guy by the name of Amri. He became king, ru uh, ruled for 12 years. He purchased a hill in Samaria. Um, mm -hmm. The only reason I bring it up is because they put it in the Bible. <laughs> uh, but he, he, it cost two talents. And a lot of times we hear the word talents, and it's generally the um, um, amount of money that a person, a normal person, could make in a year. Yeah, so, yeah roughly, yeah, for a talent. Yeah. Um, yeah, ballpark. Yeah. Uh, not that it's a competition here, but uh, this guy did more evil in the sight of the Lord than all that were before him. Yep. And we've heard that phrase a couple times now, and we'll hear it a couple more times. I Which think, too. means that things are getting worse. Yeah. <laughs> if, yeah, we're if, spiraling if, down. If this is, like you said, not a competition, but if the next guy is worse than the previous guy regularly. The next guy is worse. <laughs> <laughs> he really is. All right, so the next guy is Ahab. Um, 
well fairly known, famous, so yeah, fairly right. well known. Not, yeah. not not just because of him, but because of the next key character who shows up yeah. in our in our in our following chapters yeah. here. So Ahab became king over Israel. He reigns for twenty two years, so yeah. he's in there for a while. Yeah. Um, he did more evil in the sight of the Lord than all who were before him. Yeah. And you know, part of the trend here. Yeah. And he married. Dun, 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 yep. Go Jezebel. Ahead. Jezebel. Jezebel. That's a name that you may recognize. Yeah. Right? And yes, that Jezebel. Yes, too. that Jezebel. Um, She's not even. Uh, Jewish. I mean, she wasn't even uh, right. from it's Israel. She was, yeah, she was uh, from uh, Sidon. So Tyre and Sidon, modern day uh, Lebanon. So, yeah. Yeah. So she converted him to worship Baal. Uh, she definitely will show up soon, um, more times. Mm -hmm. uh, so then we get to chapter 17, and we switch now, and all of a sudden we're on Elijah the prophet. Yes. And, and he just like comes out of nowhere. There's no introduction. There's no, This is one of the, the weird or cool or whatever you want to think of about Elijah. He just all of a sudden just shows up and God said to Elijah, go do this. And he did. He's like, where? who are you and where did you He kind of disappears from? a couple times too though. So <laughs> it's kind of his, his <laughs> mode. His MO, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, so he's, he talks to Ahab and talks to God first. And, he's, and he says, look, unless I give the command, um, being Elijah... There's not going to be any dew or any rain um, in the years, years ahead. Yeah, yeah. Um, Which, by the way, is shows up in the book of James. James chapter 5, Elijah yeah. is one of two Old Testament guys that uh, are talked about in, in James in chapter 5. Nice. Elijah and Job would be the other one. So. Right. So when you think about a prophet, you think in terms of, this is a really cool job, right? I get to talk to God. And then I tell the king what God wants me to. What could possibly go wrong with that? And <laughs> Unless the king is more evil than anybody else who's come before him and his right. wife is Jezebel. <laughs> right. So these guys did not have an easy life at all. Yeah. Right. They had to break bad news to the king. And if the king was evil, it was generally bad news over and over and over again. And at some point, the king's tired of it. Yeah. He doesn't care if you're a prophet. You're gone. Yep. So um, Elijah comes with some terrible news. Look, no rain, uh, which really means famine. People are going to die. Yep. Um, not good times at all. Uh, so God then told Elijah, go hide. Yeah, and, right. And told him exactly where to go and what to do, right? Drink from the stream and uh, ravens will bring you food. Uh, which is kind of cool, and that's usually the picture we see of him. Yeah. Right, by a stream and yeah. ra ravens birds, bringing him yeah. some food. Right. Um, so the stream dries up. Because <laughs> there's no rain. <laughs> yeah, and God tells him, you know, hey, there's a widow. I want you to go live with her. Um, Fun connection here. Yep. That is in the territory of Sidon, which is where Jezebel, Jezebel is from. from. So he's hiding out sort of in enemy territory. Ooh, and nobody would have And she that. doesn't yeah. know. Yeah. Yeah. So he shows up at this widow's house, and it turns out this widow is making her last meal. Right, literally, and, yeah, and literally, yeah. This is all I have. I'm gonna make a couple cakes, and then uh, my son and I will starve to death. Yeah, and matter of fact about the whole yeah. ordeal, she's and by cakes, she's already accepted it. Yeah, right. you know, you know, <laughs> wedding right. tears. Right. Be a, a bread like <laughs> yeah, thing. I did a little cupcake probably yeah. almost a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Um, Elijah said, "Okay, we're gonna do that plan, but bring me a small cake first. And you know this lady who's gonna right this lady who's gonna starve to death I had to think twice about it right but she did as she was asked well I mean, a and prophet asked her a but. prophet but a Jewish prophet and she's in Gentile territory right yeah. so there's there's that connection that we we don't want to yeah. forget there right so she did what Elijah said then she made the cake for her and her son and then the next day there was enough food for the three of them. And that continued. The flour was never empty, and the oil never ran out. Yeah, I love that. Pretty, one, yeah, that's great, isn't it? Not so much that yeah, you know, you're feeding the countryside. You're feeding the countryside, but it sort of reminds you: give us this day our daily yeah, daily bread, bread right? right. Or manna um, yep. during during that. Just time. enough for the yeah, day. Enough. Yeah. Uh, at one point, the son gets sick. It's sick enough that uh, he's close to death. So Elijah prays to God for him to be healed, and, and he was healed. And to me, this is the odd thing. The woman says, now I know that you're a prophet. Mm -hmm. So to me, not running out of flour and oil <laughs> was a really big signal, but not to her. It, yeah. it, took, a, it took a healing. Yeah. 
for it to happen. Yeah. And I mean, we, I mean, you can you can sort of see that, right? Because it, depending on how long it's been happening, you sort of used to it. You forget that yeah. everybody else is it just suffering. Shows it just shows yeah. up. It's just always there. Um, but now this is her boy, and she's a widow, right. which means she it. has nobody to take care of her right. um, when the prophet moves on or whatever. So, yeah, right. this was a big deal. Yeah. Um, so in the third year of the famine, God told Elijah to uh, go see Ahab again, and. Uh, he basically said, so there can be rain. Yeah. And Elijah kind of figures it out that, hey, you know, there's going to be a, a confrontation of some kind. Uh, but on his way there, he ran into, is it Obadiah? Mm-hmm. Uh, who was uh, supervising over the palace. Okay. There's like 13 Obadiahs in the Bible. There really are. Is, Fun fact, 13. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Is this... Uh, Anyone that we know, <laughs> like the not. writer yeah, of uh, probably the writer not of Obadiah, the, yeah, probably okay. not the same guy. Right. Um, probably not. Like you said, Obadiah seems to be a fairly popular name. Right. Uh, it means servant of Yah, so servant of Jehovah, Jehovah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, All right. and this guy uh, proved that he was. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so one, his name. yeah, one of the things he did is he protected a um, hundred prophets from Jezebel, uh, back to Jezebel, um, and Elijah tells, uh, let's see. Um, she was she was killing the Jewish prophets, yep. um, and he put them in the two caves. He fed them, you know, got them water, kept them safe yeah. uh, for a time. Um, Obadiah calls Elijah master, so there's kind of a of a of a, At least a teacher respect. master yeah. uh, kind of thing going on here. Yeah. Um, but yet he served Ahab. Yeah. So he was working for Ahab, working under Ahab, but um, if you want to call it, not a spy. Um, but in secret, but, well, not. So, I don't think it was so much in secret as as um, Ahab somehow trusted him, and yet, I mean, obviously the secret he was hiding the, the, right. the prophets and everything, right. but um, Ahab trusted him that at least he would be able to, you know, serve as a counselor. Right. So, so um, Elijah tells Obadiah, "Hey, go tell Ahab that I'm back. Elijah's back, right?" <laughs> and because yeah, he disappears. <laughs> yeah, right. And Obadiah kind of freaks out. Yeah. So why? I mean, what, what's Well, because Obadiah said, if I go in there and say Elijah's back, and then you take off again, I'm dead. Yeah, yeah I'm dead. Literally. So I need to know that you're not going to take off and go running and hide. Cause, and so now I'm the one, you know, right. holding the bag, right? Right. Elijah's Elijah like, no, so. I'll show up. I'll yeah. be there. I'll be there today. I will be there. Yeah. 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 So Elijah, or so Ahab and, and Elijah, they meet, and Elijah criticizes, or Ahab criticizes Elijah for the famine and drought, and Elijah's like, "It wasn't me. <laughs> it was your father's dynasty. It was you. Yep. You abandoned God. You followed false god." Um, but then he asks Ahab to assemble all of Israel. So again, the northern the northern tribes is not going to be everybody. It's every not going to be everybody, but probably right. representatives from everywhere. Right. Yeah. So let's bring everybody in at Mount Carmel, Mount Carmel, yep. and also the 450 Baal prophets. Yeah. And uh, and the 400 prophets of uh, Ashira. Yep. Um, so another. Yep. That Jezebel yeah, we've got supports. almost we've got almost a thousand false prophets here. You right. know, the, the, right. the, that are not just worshiping the the these false gods, but leading Israel yeah. in worship of these false gods. So here's probably, here's probably what you had heard before, if you heard anything about Elijah. Um, he proposes an extremely fair test. Yeah. And he presents it to the crowd, and he tells the people that you, um, and, and these are literally the people, not the prophets, you guys are paralyzed by indecision. Yep. So we're going to figure out today... Who the real God is. Yep. And and that's the whole purpose. That's the whole purpose it's of this. It's either going to be Jehovah yep. or it's going to yep. be Baal. Those yep. are and here's the deal. Options. If my God shows up, you're going to follow my God. If their God shows up, you're going to follow their God. Yep. And Seems everybody's fair. like, what's the test? <laughs> okay. It's me, one, against 450 prophets. Yep. Um, there's two bulls. We're going to um, kill them. We're going to chop them up. These guys are going to... Um, uh, um, Get everything set except lighting the fire. Yep. And then they're going to call down on their God and have their God light the fire. Yep. And then I'll do the same. Yep. Whichever God can actually bring fire down and, uh, you know, consume start them. the, you know, yeah. start the, the, the sacrifice. Yep. Uh, that God wins. Yep. And the people said, just fair. Seems this fair. This is fair. 
Um, so Elijah told um, you know the other side to go first. Right? Yeah. He deferred to the second <laughs> he half. Deferred. <laughs> <laughs> so from morning until noon, uh, they invoked the name of Baal. Uh, there was no answers. Right? They started jumping around. Dancing. They're in a frenzy. Yep. They started mutilating themselves. Yeah, because that was part of their trade. You know. So so again. Again, we're, we're trying to make connections yeah. here. This is exactly the thing in Leviticus like, that is told, don't cut yourself, don't make marks on yourself, don't do all these things in worship of these pagan gods, right? right? You know, some people say, oh, you can't have tattoos and all this other stuff. But in the context, this is exact. They are doing what God specifically told yeah. Israel to not do all the way back in Leviticus. Yeah. Now, i got to believe the favorite part is next. <laughs> that, your favorite part. So um, Elijah's goading him. Yeah, oh, goading yeah. him on. Oh, right? Hey, wait, you can yell louder. Maybe he's asleep. Maybe, he's asleep. <laughs> Maybe he went on a trip and he's not back yet. I love the one. You Maybe he's you. out relieving himself. <laughs> Yeah. We'll give him a chance to come out of the restroom yeah. and he'll light it on yeah. fire. So at some point they called it, right? There, there's nothing over there. So then Elijah went to his side. Um, he uh, um, he constructed an altar from, from 12 stones. Uh, then he made a trench around it, uh, put wood down, cut up his bowl, put it on top. You know, he's got the fire set and he's got this trench, which is a little odd. Yeah. Then he calls people to come up and fill up four water jugs and pour it all over um, the meat and the wood and it'll go into the trench. Yep. And he did that either three times or four times. Several times. And yeah, just a bunch of pots. Saturate, yeah. saturate the thing. Yeah. Right. So yep. you know he take he, it's the extra bonus right that he that he's going to, um, and then it said later he approached the altar and prayed to God asking God to bring fire so Israel would again know who their God was. Simple prayer, no dancing, no screaming, no cutting, no, you know, whatever. Just very simple. God, do your thing. Right. But also, so your people yep. come back to you. I, yep. I, I, think that, I think that that's awesome. So fire comes down from the sky, uh, consumes the offering, the wood, the water. The people knew. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah, your there, side there, wins. No contest. Yeah. Um, there was probably a little frenzy going there. People were excited. Um, Elijah then told the crowd, kill the prophets. Fine, get them. Grab them. Don't let them run away. Kill them. Yep. Slaughtered them. Yep. Um, so the nation, at least the northern nation of Israel, is uh, back with God. We'll figure out how much that really means, you know, <laughs> at, at some point. Um, but then there's still the matter of when's it going to rain. Yeah. So they're at Mount Carmel. Elijah and Ahab climb up to the top. Um, they're taking a look around, and Elijah asks his servant, you know, hey, go look out to the sea. And seven times he had to do it. I'm sure the servant's like, yeah, nothing, nothing. nothing. Yeah. And then the seventh time was. I see a cloud. A cloud. Yeah, a um, tiny little cloud out in the distance. Yep. Well, that tiny little cloud was rising up from the sea and kept getting bigger. And he told him, you better go tell Ahab, you better take off. And, and when yeah. you say the sea, we're talking about the Mediterranean yeah. Sea. Not the Dead Sea, not yeah. the Sea of Galilee, not okay. this little lake somewhere. We're talking the Mediterranean Sea is about ready to dump water all over. Yeah. So interesting thing here. So Elijah tells the servants to, you know, Ahab to hitch up your horses, take off. So ah Ahab takes off because rain. Everybody's at this point realizing rain is coming. It's and coming. It's going to be a doozy. So let, let's let's find well, some safety. And everything safety. is so dry and parched after three years. I mean, it's not just going to. Yeah, it's going to so be it's gullies. Gonna, it's going to hit and yeah. run everywhere. Yeah. This is flash flood warning. Yeah. Um, so, like you said, Ahab, and we're on chapter 19 now, Ahab told yeah. Jezebel what happened. Jezebel sends messengers to Elijah that Jezebel's going to take his life. Mm -hmm. um, so Elijah uh, flees um, into Judah and then travels uh, a day. So he's, uh, he's in the wilderness. Elijah really doesn't know what to do at this point yeah. with his life, right? Um, he asks the Lord to take his life. Uh, he falls asleep. He was awakened by an angel's touch, and he found uh, he found a cake baking on hot coals with a jug of water. Certainly helped to revive him. Um, and then the angel told him, you know, you better eat more because we got a big journey that you're going on. Mm -hmm. So Elijah then traveled for forty days and forty nights, and we've heard the forty before, right? Kind of a not a magic number, but a, mm -hmm. a number um, until he reaches a, a mountain called Horeb. Yeah, better known as Mount Sinai. 
Okay. And, yep. and in here in chapter 19, it's called the mountain of God. So he is meeting with God at the same place Moses did. Nice. Does that sound familiar? Moses and Elijah on a mountain? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> Mount of Transfiguration, Matthew yeah. 17, Moses and Elijah meet with, uh, come down and meet with Jesus. Right. Not at the same mountain, but on on uh, yeah. on a mountain there. That's way cool. Yeah, actually. Um, God's, you know, why are you here? I'm sure God knew why he was here. But, you know, <laughs> why are you here? Rhetorical question. <laughs> uh, but Eli and Elijah said, Look, God, I have been completely loyal to you, and now I'm going to die. Yeah. You know, because I was loyal to you. And, and God says, go stand outside and I'll pass by. Um, I've always loved this part, but I don't know why. Um, so a huge wind comes by, a wind big enough to cause, cause landslides. Um, but that wasn't God. Mm -hmm. And then an earthquake uh, and fire came, and that wasn't God. And then there was a soft whisper, Yeah, and that was God. Yeah, I'm going to make a point here, yeah. because if you've got a study Bible or if you're reading some commentaries or whatever, the, the, the Hebrew text here is a little bit weird. Um, it's usually translated a whisper or a still small voice or something, but... The, the Hebrew, some commentaries point out that it may not have been very quiet. It may have been a big rushing thing, which is why the, the follow-up is, you know, he covered his face with his robe and everything. You don't do that with a whisper, typically. There, there, yeah. there may have, it may have not been the still small voice that everybody sort of, right. you know, likes. It may have been a much bigger thing. And so if you have a study note, if you have a commentary or something that brings that out... Uh, don't just dismiss it right away. It's a Hebrew thing. It's not. It's not like you know they're trying to you know throw off the story or anything. It is a known issue. Um, I don't think it changes the story except for the applications that uh, people make. It's a, oh you know God's God's always you know whispering and you have to you know be still and know that I'm God, which is also taken out of context and and all of that. Uh, so I think it's the application that's the problem. Yeah. Not. Okay. the actual thing itself. So just wanted to point yep. that out. Um, so God again asked Elijah why he was there. And Elijah, you know, basically says the same thing. I was completely committed to you. Now I'm going to be killed. And God told him what to do. Mm -hmm. And interestingly enough, uh, it's like God is letting him retire, right? He kind of, kind of taking him out. He told him, go anoint um, the, the king of, of Syria, um, mm -hmm. Hazel. Mm -hmm. uh, which is interesting because it's Syria, right? Syria, so which not, is I'll not the it. northern tribe, not the southern tribe, but yeah. Syria. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then also anoint um, um, two guys uh, to take your place as a prophet. And he also said, hey, by the way, you know, you're not the last one. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there's seven thousand more. So he's he's going to anoint a king of Syria. He's going to anoint the king of the new king of Israel, and he's going to anoint a new prophet. Then, yeah. yeah. And yeah. then, yeah, that that you know. And, and by the way, you're not the last one. <laughs> yeah, maybe it was said with a little sass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Well, might yeah, anyway. yeah. But, well, which is also. I, I mean, good, right? Because he wants to retire. He's he wants out. Um, you know, he thinks he's the last one. You know. Yeah. But, you know, you, you would think Star Wars read this and kind of kind of went with that. There is another. <laughs> yeah, there is another. But it's not just another. He said, "I've got seven thousand people right. still out yeah, there who haven't bowed their knee to Baal right. or, or kissed an image." Yeah. So it's good. So then, uh, so we in there for the week. Yeah, we're introduced to the the new guy, Elisha. Don't really have much information about him yet. Uh, he'll show up quite a bit more in Second Kings, uh, but um, this is where the Elijah, Elisha. It's like, yeah. oh, you know, yeah. Um, and they're so close to each other, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. But that's yeah. That's I mean, just this week sort of encapsulates the whole Elijah and Ahab and Jezebel right. thing, uh, which is which is great. So yeah. So a lot of lessons in here, a lot of, you know, some details and stuff and some, some things that you may already know, but definitely a lot of lessons. Uh, if you're very familiar with uh, these, you know, from Sunday school or something, don't <laughs> uh, over it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, resist the temptation to just <laughs> blow through it. it. You yeah. know, I've heard this before many, many times. Actually slow down intentionally be, and, and read it because you, if you know it really well, it could be that you haven't read it for a while. And you're just relying on memory. So make sure you do that. And um, we'd love to hear what new things you pick up and um, uh, questions that you have. So make sure you send those in. And we will pick up here and finish First Kings next time. Bye.